One talking dog. One new student. One Disney Saturday morning. ABC. Catch the dog who's taking over the school this fall on ABC. Disney's teacher's pet. Disneyone.com. Welcome, dear listener, to our podcast, Jeff and Merck present Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Where we journey through each issue of the most underrated Marvel series of the 80s while drinking beer. Analyzing awesome and amazing adolescent adventures and absorbing alcohol. I'm Jeff. And I, the last time I checked, am Rick. Make me banter. Make me a random soul. A random mind, a random face, a random lie. Random banter time, buddy. Talk to me, tell me tall tales and tantalizing tidbits of trivia today. Nope, not a clue. Not a clue. Not a clue. I'm thinking it's something to do with space. I nope. hope it's something to do with space. But nope. Okay, then then I got I got nothing. I got nothing. Had you ever seen a show called Nip Tuck? No, I did not. But I did follow the USA Network because characters are welcome there. <laughs> yes, that was the uh, perfect lie intro song for the TV show <laughs> Nip Tuck. And do you know why I might have obliquely referenced Nip Tuck for a random banter intro for this comic? Um, because somebody's in the hospital? <laughs> Partially, yes. That's a good one that I wasn't going for. It was kind of a medical drama, but not really. Nip Tuck was about a couple of doctors who did plastic surgery. They fixed bodies. They updated bodies. They made new bodies. Is there anybody in this who might be getting a new body? Well, yes. There's Friday. I'm, I'm actually looking at the page right yep. here. There's Friday who's got a new body. I was also going to say that the character, the kids all look like they've had plastic surgery. Yeah, everybody looks weird. Everybody's <laughs> kind of different and odd. We can get into that later. We'll get into that later. Yeah, it, it, this was an oblique random banter intro. I could have easily done a version of uh, burning down the house for the intro, the, yeah, but I chose yeah. not to because... Too soon? Too soon. A little too, too soon. soon. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's fair. That is fair. I'm going to just move on past that because I've had, like, life-changing experiences, but I'm not going to talk about the life-changing experiences of somebody nipping and tucking into my eyeball. Mm. Haha, segue. I'm instead going to talk about my little trip to the Baltimore Comic Con that I did at the second to last weekend in October, and I had a wonderful time. I had the opportunity to, well, not the opportunity, I paid for tickets uh, to go to Baltimore. <laughs> you paid for the wonderful opportunity. I paid for the opportunity. But I went to Baltimore and I met up with Tim Price, the pod crasher. Him and I were roomies all weekend, which was kind of fun because we talked to each other on the internet. We have talked to each other on Zoom. We have never met each other in person. So we found out by the end of the weekend, one important fact about each other, neither of us are serial killers. No. That's good to know. <laughs> so it was really great. Great roommate. A great time with him. I spent pretty much the entire weekend nearby him. Every now and again, we'd like split off in the on the convention floor, kind of come back together. Went out and had meals with him and Darren and Ruth Sutherland and a, another fellow Twitter friend, Steve Givens. The five of us went out to dinner a couple times. We had a wonderful time talking. I met a lot of great people, great artists, great creators, great writers at the comic convention. Uh, saw some old friends as well. Got to meet and talk with our good friend, well, soon to be good friend, hopefully, Fred Van Lent, who is the writer of three of the miniseries, the alternate universe power pack miniseries that we have been covering on our Patreon side. And I've got to talk with him. He signed a lot of my comics, which was very cool. And I was able to give him one of our t-shirts of our show. And I gave it to him on Friday. And on Saturday morning, I'm eating breakfast and look over and in walks Fred Van Lent. And he's wearing the t-shirt. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> and he, brought it, he was wearing it at the show. And I felt great <laughs> so that was cool i got a lot of comic books signed i got another really awesome jam book done with like i think it was 18 different artists 
drew uh, different villains on one of the DC Villains of the Year books that I had. That was very, very cool. Including a snark drawn by Ziggy, who goes by Power Pack Nation on Twitter and is a great fan. Um, no, it was a great time. It was a fantastic time. I made it to one trivia panel. The rest of the time I was walking <laughs> the floor. I just enjoyed talking to people. It was quite quite fun. I got some great books too. I got some, I really can't help just walking by some of the lesser known creators who've got just, you know, a little table set up with their little run of books, go up and talk to them. If they've got the good pitch, I will throw down the money and pick up their book. I'm still getting through some of them, but I have, (laughs) I picked up some really great little books. I had to put a stop on it because I only brought so much luggage and I brought a lot of books and I was filling the luggage back up as the weekend went on and Saturday and Saturday night, I was like, Tim, I can't buy any more books, which meant that I bought like about 10 more books. (laughs) But yes. (laughs) Because you can leave underwear there and buy it back when you get home. I had a little bit of room, but it was quite, it was a bit of heavier suitcase coming back home. But no, it was, it was great time. A lot of fun. Came back on Monday night, Tuesday morning, went in and had cataract surgery. So I've had a full, full week the past couple of weeks. How about you, man? Anything exciting? Let's see. What fun things have I done? Well, I watched somebody's Facebook and Twitter feed about going to a convention and doing stuff. (laughs) That was, uh, I'm not jealous. I mean... (laughs) I got to go out and eat in uh, with two very lovely family members that I'm always eating meals with at my own house. Uh, You know, that's pretty cool stuff. But I did get to take my daughter out and go trick-or-treating for Halloween. We went around the neighborhood. That was great. We started the day off by trick-or-treating over at a game store. Rainy Day Games over in uh, Aloha. And the joy of trick-or-treating at a game store is that they give you a dice bag with some candy in it and some dice. Which nice, is always nice, kind of nice. cool. So we make all... sure you're eating the right one. Oh yes, those got pulled pretty quick. Just to make sure, we all got D20s. So Aurora got her very first D20, and she's announced to me she wants to be a scientist that plays D and D. And I'm like, following your daddy's footprints. That's pretty cool. All right, nice. And, yeah, and then after that, we uh, just went around the neighborhood, and she walked around and had a uh, really cute little astronaut and uh, help, you know, astronaut's helmet costume on, and masked her up under there, and so she got to go to the doors, and most of the people were masked, and most of the uh, trick-or-treaters were masked up and everything, and we gave everybody pretty good room. There's only a couple instances where kids were like, my turn! It was a quieter year, but it was nice. There were people out, and there were costumes, and it was, we let her walk the neighborhood until she hit a stage where she's like, I think I want to go home. And we're like, okay, let's finish up this house. Then we'll go home and finish up the house. I'm like, do you want to go home or go trick or treating more? And she's like, mm, more trick or treating. Okay. <laughs> do a couple more houses. I want to go home now. Okay. We'll finish up this house and you can tell us if you want to go home or trick or treat more afterwards. Okay. Get done. You want to go home or trick or treat? Mm, more trick or treating. And finally she hit a stage where she's like, yeah, I think I want to go home and I think I want a piggyback ride. I, so it's like, yeah, you're hundred percent done. <laughs> And then we went home, and uh, over the past handful of days, we've been doing the daughter doesn't know it, but there's a perpetual Halloween candy tax from parents that goes on every day. So <laughs> I too have been partaking of the candy. That's getting me through the late afternoon of work. Right now. <laughs> I don't know why. I took a, I took a week and a half off of work, and coming back has been really tough. Mm-hmm. Even though I can see, so yeah. Well, I think we have chatted way long enough. We may just be. Refusing to do this book, I don't know. We'll get to it. But speaking of things that made us cringe, Jeff, can you give us the two-sentence replay from last episode? Katie learns that if you skip a couple of grades, that you're going to get bullied by the kid that looks like he was held back a couple of grades. Jack learns that not narking on a sibling going to a party doesn't mean that they won't be miserable anyways. Julie learns that if a boy you like is nicknamed Dr. Octopus, that they are probably pretty handsy. And Alex learns that if you are a muscular, blonde-haired, blue-eyed new kid in town, that you are going to be popular with the ladies. We learn that the mysterious snark-shaped figure hanging out with Kofi is actually, dun-dun-dun, a snark. And we learn that Power Pack writers seem to really lock in on retelling the Maggie falls into a coma for some reason and has to go to the hospital storyline. Now that the, I mean, revealing that the shadowy, mysterious, snark-shaped silhouette is in fact a snark is really a pointless reveal, right? Two sentence replay is over. Why don't you give me a beer and tell us what our Power Pack pick is? My pleasure, my friend. Go ahead and grab that bag of yours, mm. hold it in one of your hands, mm. reach in with the other hand, mm. and let's say, dun-dun-dun. Mm. Uh, sticky. Dun-dun. Uh, 
Cosmos, Coconut, and Vanilla Hazy IPA. <laughs> Go. Speaking of coconut. <laughs> I like coconut. That's a cool looking can. That's a little tall boy. That's Cosmos, and it has a nice space scene in the background. And I think that's the oh, is that the Cat's Eye Nebula? Sure. Mm, I need. I should know this. Yeah, it just looks really cool. It's just really nice. It looks like a, a space eye. You know what it means. You know, you look at space, and sometimes you see a giant eye in the cosmos. And that's what this is. It's the. Cosmos in the Eye of Space, a coconut and vanilla hazy IPA by Ecliptic Brewing. And story time on it is... Lose yourself in the cosmos while discovering the multiple dimensions of this hazy IPA. Together, aromatic notes of vanilla and coconut work harmoniously to reveal a flavor that reaches well beyond the universe. So while you're opening up that can, can you tell me why? Why on God's green earth did I choose something called Cosmos? Because you have been re-watching Seinfeld, and you like Cosmo Kramer. I see what you did there. But it's Deep Space Nine that we've been watching, and that does involve the cosmos. <laughs> it's because a space has a big part of it. Snarks have come down from space. The Chimelian, a, a, a Chimelian has come down from space. Power Pack gets traveled back up into space to help Chimelians deal with a snark war. And space, spacey, space, 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 space. They're going into the cosmos. They head across the cosmos, and we've got ourselves a nice 8% ABV, 45 IBU, and yes, this is a hazy IPA, and it is that can't-see-through orange color with a nice light white head. It smells like an IPA. Yeah, it smells like some IPA, all right. I'm getting that vanilla in there that's really cutting through the normal tropical kind of uh, mm -hmm. hoppy flavors, the hoppy smells you get in there. Yeah, it's got a nice citrusy aroma with a little... Vanilla. A little vanilla. I like the flavor. That has a rotating flavor profile. It starts in a little sharp with a little bit of the hops that come in, but then for me, it's very, very sweet. Okay, for me, it does the IPA hops, mm -hmm. goes into coconut, yeah. goes into IPA goes into a vanilla and then kind of drifts into a smooth vanilla coconut IPA flavor. So interesting. For me, I'm getting a lot of the sweetness from the coconut, from the mm -hmm. vanilla. I, I, it cuts through all of the hoppiness and all of that, that real pine tar that I'm used to. I actually enjoy this right now. The second sip after that really knocked out the IPA-ness of it and went more coconut vanilla mm -hmm. with IPA. It's, it's, it's very sweet. Hmm, that's different. That is kind of odd, kind of different, kind of kind of neat. It's kind of out of this world. A little bit. I'm kind of curious to see how I'm going to like it by the end of the hour. Me too. Me too. These ones usually change on us, but that that's got a lot to change. Yeah. It's got to come. It's got to do a big 180 to get into that heavy IPA hmm. hit. But we shall see. For now, though, we will move on and talk about some opening credits. Power Pack issue number three, October 2000, Split Decision. Credits, writer, Sean Burry, penciler, Colleen Doran, inker, Terry Austin, letterer, Chris Eliopoulos, colorist, Tom Smith, editor, Michael Martz, chief, Bob Harris. Featuring Power Pack, Alex, Zero G, Julie, Lightspeed, Jack, Mass Master, Katie, Energizer, also starring Kofi, Friday, Dad Power, Comatose Mom Power, and some snarks, and a chameleon. And another chameleon. And some more snarks. Deep power stance dance off. We fight snarks now. Fight. Choose your destiny. Pointing. Lasers. Punch. If we are sounding a little strange, or stranger than normal, it is because the first panel is the kids. Half of whom have changed the colors of their shirts since the last episode. Kofi. Who is now violently pink. And the revealed random snark boy reacting to the attacking snarks and a deep squat stance fight occurs. All is going well until this new snark, Sobak, kills a snark with a blaster that he summoned from his bracer. Now it is real. Now it is all serious and stuff. Yeah, Alex is not happy about this. He gets right in that snark's face and says, Sobak, you disintegrated that snark. You, you killed him. Hatchling, this is war. If we don't kill them, they will kill us. No way, Snark. You were supposed to be the good guys. We don't ever kill, ever. <laughs> I like how Kofi is rolling his eyes in the background of this. I like how the fighting is still happening. I mean, I am all for a moral one to grow on lesson, but not in the middle of fighting for my life. Well, if not then, Rick, when? 
We make the time where we can. Morality is not a light switch that you can turn on and off. It is a fixed compass point, a path that you must not stray from, lest you fall into the pits of ambiguity. Jack is on my side. That is because Jack is smart and knows that arguing morality is best left to those far from the front lines, who are safely sitting in their studies with a nice cup of tea in their hands. Also because Jack has a shield up and is taking all the laser fire. There is a lot of arguing going on by this sextet of heroes, but no actual, you know, plan. Which means the attacking snarks are making it through the shield, and it looks like stabby murder murder curtains for Jack. Zrap. But that order of stabby murder curtains is put on hold thanks to a crystallization blast from Sobak's changed out immobilization blaster rifle. Nice! Is this a morality lesson conforming non-lethal way to stop the enemy? So many questions to discuss! But what is not discussed is that the Snarks have never found a way to reverse that crystallization process. Yet. But they have set their top guys on working on it. Who? Their top guys. Ah. Well, the fighting continues, and Katie unloads a barrage of mini powerballs onto the Snark Sky Sled. Zap, zap, zap. Which causes it to crash into their mom's She Shed studio. Crash. Thereby destroying mom's artwork and killing the Snark. Wait, maybe the Snark parachuted out G.I. Joe style. Oh, wait. No, never mind. Yeah. Wow. Double strikeout. Alex doesn't care about his mom's livelihood and passion for art, or the fact that his sister slaughtered someone. Right now, he wants answers. Answers that have already been given to him a couple of pages ago, but he hasn't been able to put the context clues together yet. For now, more fighting. Julie finds out that some snarks have intangibility fields, which is what let them get through Jack's molecular density field. Katie keeps up the mini Powerball barrage, Jack provides some lavender cloud cover, and Alex zero-g's some snarks and says that Power Pack works together better than even the New Warriors. Well, I don't know if we want to go that far. Mostly because I don't know if that is a really low bar or not. And we have a scene change to the medical center. Why? Oh, yeah, that's right. Maggie collapsed in the previous issue. Uh, Maggie? Who's Maggie? Oh, yeah, sorry. Morg collapsed. Her name is Morg now. Jim has taken Morg to the hospital, and some doctors take her away to do medicine on Morg, leaving a teary-eyed Jim standing there saying, Morg. Back at the fight, the kids have won. Over half of the snarks are safely crystallized, and I am sure that they are not dying or dead at all. The rest of the snarks are tied up, and a majority of the new power property is a smoldering fire that Data is putting out. But most of the kids are smiling. It is a good day. Then Kofi tells them to hop on the ship and get ready for a trip to Snark World. What you talking about, Willis? This caravan of mayhem and destruction did not show up for fun. They came to get the kids to enact some devastation back on Snark World. The Chimelians are no match for the Snark race. Who they have been fighting for centuries. They need four kids from a Seattle suburb to handle this mess. Well, the 90s are over, and they just burned down the garage, so forming a band is out of the question. Might as well do something. Jack is not happy with this. He bought flannel and everything. He is the voice of reason saying that it does not have to be them that helps. And what have the Chimelians done for them lately? And what about Mom? Their mom is dying, and they need to be there for her. Unfortunately, for our blustering blue boy, the rest of the family... What is the term? Um, doesn't care. Alex believes that this is their duty. Julie supports him, and Katie wants to bring Friday's AI Matrix on a Hey, do you remember when you can fly? Space trip. Fighting is easy. Worrying about a sick mom is boring. Meanwhile, back on Snark World... Home of the Fighting Color Purples! Morad and Jackal are fighting about who killed who and who failed to kill who and who is arguing about Queen Mother Distract, who seems to be watching the fight on a monitor... Wait, the Snarks televised their despotic leader fighting with his mom? Yeah, it's a pay-per-view event and the ratings are amazing! They would have to be. Anyway, there are a lot of assumptions about which enemies have or will be killed, but it seems like none of them actually have been so... Back in space, the smart ship Data is towing the snark ships with their surely still alive crystallized crew to Jupiter, setting them into orbit here so that they are out of the story and easily forgotten about. The remaining prisoners are muzzled and kept for later plot relevance. Now we find out that this Sobak is the high snark of Clan Ankar, the only trustworthy snark clan ever to be found. This snark is also the heir to the throne, chosen by Badshah before Jackal took back over his borrowed body. 
and I am not making any of this up, folks. But most importantly, he is also Kofi's best friend. This was all part of Yurik's plan to run and get Power Pack to help install Sobak in case things went bad for the Emperor. Sure would have been nice to ask Power Pack about this before, you know, the fourth quarter. Three-fourths of Power Pack think this is a swell plan, but Jack is just not having any of this Kool-Aid. He is done with this and is ready to go home and see his mommy. And nothing Julie can say or do can change his mind. Give me one good reason why we should help the Chimelians, let alone the Snarks. Perhaps I can answer that question, Jack Power. Oh my goodness! That's when Lord Byro shows up with another spacecraft like a favorite guest star on a popular TV show that the world loves. Byro pops over and gives the same backstory that Kofi did, using less words and providing Jack no promises or incentives. And Jack agrees to help, for Kofi's sake. Okay then. Sometimes you can lead a horse to Jack and make the kid help in an intergalactic fight. Uh, that may be the most tortured saying you have ever written down. Thank you. I needed to lie down after writing that line. Not so fast, my little friend, for I must tell you the tale of the escape of Lord Yurik. Do you have to? Yes! It is a mighty tale of daring, cunning, and high adventure. It is a tale that turns men's blood cold, causes puppies to faint, and grown women to state. Ah, declare. It is an amazing, wonderful, stupendous, a true literary marvel in this age of... He gets broken out by the rival queen, Destric, in order to upset Jackal and Maraud. Ah, so you have read it. Yeah. Back with the kids, Katie has been beamed over to this new sleek ship that Byril showed up in. After rummaging around in the junk drawer, he is able to find the right goober to allow him to connect the family's 2000-era Mac to a chameleon space technology. <laughs> hey, Rick. Uh, the funny thing is, it was just a standard coaxial cable. Yeah. Anyway, the download is complete, and after hearing a... Friday comes online in her third body, strutting her new spacey look. Hooray! So while Katie is dancing a jig with Byral, a la Bruce Willis in The Last Boy Scout, the rest of the kids are over on Data, brooding, pining, and fighting. Julie is gazing at her reflection in the stars, pondering the age-old question that has stumped many a preteen girl for decades. Why are boys jerks? Hey, speaking of boys that are jerks, Jack walks up and innocently asks if she is okay, and if she is upset because of something that jerk boy at school did. Jack receives, in return for his spot-on intuition and empathetic inquiry, a royal yelling off from his sis. Uncalled. Four. Agree. But Jack does not roll over. He snaps right back and storms off. This interplay is being observed by Sobek, who asks Kofi if this is really the crack team that they need. Can't they just go back to Earth, hit the LA Underground, and see if they can find the A-team? Yeah, like they could find the A-team if they were trying to look for him. But Kofi, embarrassed by his cousins, promises that these guys will come through. He helps. Kitty hollow zoom calls over, all giddy and happy, and lets the family know the awesome news that Friday is back. The plan is that the kids will take Friday while Sobek and Kofi are on data. Beryl pieces out, having a prior dinner engagement or reservation somewhere else, or uh, I don't know. He's pretty vague about these things, and he dungeon masters into and out of scenes pretty frequently. Jack has factory reset back to his pessimistic mode and is complaining about having to clean up the chameleon messes again. We'd probably be doing the galaxy a favor if the snarks did wipe each other out. That's it for Alex. He just unloads on his brother. Jack, I am so sick of your complaining. Just shut up and act like a part of this team. If you don't, I'll take your molecular powers away. Then you can whine to Friday while the rest of us save the snark world. Nice leadership style, Alex. Way to show us the softer side of Sears. I see that all that family therapy that you all went through after your new warriors phase has really paid off. Not to be an enabler, but let's face it, the kids are all cross because of the writers and their mom being sick. Uh, speaking of, how is she doing? Oh, the doc checked her out and her white corpuscle count is high, so not good. Oh, I I and Jim? Oh, he keeps calling home and the kids are not picking up the phone. Oh, in the house? Oh, it's on fire. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Back in space, the kids teleport through elsewhere, past a lamppost, and onto the planet surface of Snark World, because we have not touched that piece of history yet. Goody? They also arrive on the planet just in time for the page count to run out, because they talk about the size of the awesome battlecruiser above them, leveling its guns and preparing to fire, but we do not get to see any of it. I guess the special effects budget just ran out. Oh, well, that's what we get to look forward to the next time, I guess. To be concluded. Next issue, Ascension. This issue, a cover. So, we are <laughs> on uh, the themes of the issue and power pack packaging time, and <laughs> we have ourselves another Colleen Doran inked by Terry Austin, and we got power pack. And we got all four kids. I guess they're in the cockpit of Friday. Sure. Kind of. It I guess kind of, it's a uh, you know, they're, they're it, in a it could, kind, they're in a thing. They're yeah. definitely behind a curve and, thing and they can look through. I know it's the reflection of the covered cities of the snarks on the snark world. Yeah. They're, they're kind of seeing those things getting blown up by some snark fighters that are kind of firing at them, and they're seeing all this kind of in the reflection of this this mirror. But it kind of looks like because these these globes are made of green glass and there's like atmosphere that's escaping that's green. It looks like the inside of the cockpit is getting gassed. Yeah. So the kids are like hitting the windshield going, help, let us out because there's gas exploding in here. It looks weird. It also, it kind of looks like just with the way the beams are going, since it's a reflection over the Mm -hmm. characters, like it looks like snark fighters are shooting beams at giant intangible power pack members it's it's weird it's kind of weird you, you, you do get the idea of what it is yeah, yeah. you've got power pack they're looking at a scene and that scene is being reflected in the window that they're looking out of and it's a cool idea but it just doesn't quite work here no and i think one of the reasons for that is that some of the things that should be reflecting on top of power pack is obscured by power pack like if you look at this uh snark fighter or cruiser or whatever it is one of its ailerons one of its little side wings is behind alex's head while the beam is in front of and And, so it's and 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 the one of the snark cities is behind jack yeah it's behind jack yeah Yeah, that's a big one right there too so it's oh i get what you're doing you're just not doing it well yeah this is awkward at best because they've shown on the very right hand side of the page that well that's on the left side on the right side i'm talking about julie you can see julie through like a side window so i'm like oh i guess to their left would be another window so you can see out but it's reflecting a mountain range but there's cloud it's you know yeah. what they're doing, but they've done it poorly. Yeah, it's which which is a, a summation of this comic. Yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Pretty colors. Yeah, it's it's very vibrant. Very vibrant. It's a good looking green. Yeah, very really ectoplasm good. green. Yeah. yeah um, Looks like ecto high C was dumped all over it. The kids are still wearing masks. That's yeah, that's they cool. are. That's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can't you can't see their utterly giant ridiculous boots. Yeah. That's good. There is one very, very important part of this cover that you haven't touched on. Do you know what it is? The Shattered Innocence. Uh, no. 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 It's, no. it's near the upper left-hand corner, and it's the part where it says, number three of four. <laughs> now, this is important because the very first issue of the comic was collector's issue number one and number two is number two and number three is number three of four and number four is number four of four so i think that they may not have originally known that they were going to be a mini series i think that they might have been thinking they were launching an entire new series and then they've discovered that no no they're going to be done so now they're just in space wrapping up their title i think i'm not sure i don't know the history here but it seems like if you're going to say number one number two number three or four, number four or four, uh, that maybe something changed halfway through. <laughs> yeah, I am not sure. I don't know the, the entire history on it myself. It's listed everywhere as a four-part miniseries, but that could be, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, mm. anyways, inside the book, inside the book. Let's, let's, let's find some good stuff on the inside of the book. Power Pack has moved into a new house that they're very excited about. They're in the lovely suburbs of Seattle, Brain mm-hmm. Big. Uh, Bainbridge Island, I think. Bainbridge Island, yes. Bainbridge Island, yes. And they have a brand new house, which is now on fire. Mm Mm-hmm. The She Shed Studio has been destroyed by a crashing snark flyer. And uh, Data was putting the fire out and removing the 
crystallized snarks and stuff, and apparently Data did a very bad job for a smart ship because that fire spread and the house is on fire, their new domicile. I hope they got the renter's insurance that they talked about in the second issue. Yeah, that'd be that'd be nice to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the house, the house, the house is on fire. First issue, their place got destroyed and they had to move to New York. The last issue, their place got destroyed, the, their, their apartment building got destroyed. Mm-hmm. And they had to move into all the world and then space. Yeah, they aren't doing well. Mm-mm. They're not doing well at all. No. No. In fact, they lived on Friday for a while, and Friday's been destroyed d- 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 yeah. arms loads of times. Yeah. If you have a house and a power family moves in moves in next to you, sell. Yeah. Sell now. Yeah. Sell quickly. Anyways, we have a new character, Sobat. Mm-hmm. What do we think about him? What Do you, th- what do, you do you like him? Not like him? What, what, what's your feelings? I like him. I have no problem with him. They haven't given him much more characterization than he is a snark that is friends with Kofi. Mm-hmm. And he is Badsha's chosen replacement. But here's the deal. This is seeming very reminiscent of Badsha and Lord Yurik. Because yes. it was a snark and a Chimelian. And they were good friends. And they had adventures together. And Badsha was a good snark that traveled around and understood and wanted to do things. And hey, now what's going on? Lord Yurik's son, Kofi, is hanging out with a good snark who's going to be emperor and, and having adventures. It's just like... So what you're saying is they've found another thing to copy. They found another thing to copy. Yes, they did. Uh, here's the biggest problem that I have with Sobek. Yeah. They held him in the shadows for quite a while. And I th- why? But yeah, why? There was no reason. In the first one, I think <laughs> they showed like you know, the shadowed clawed hand. And the next, you know, in the next issue, they were showing... What would have been better... and. I think I might have given the, the the series a bit more credit. Is you keep this this person in the shadows, you you keep him in the shadows, and then we find out that it is a demonized version of the boogeyman. Yeah, who's helping out Kofi? Yeah, that would have been interesting. It would have been something. Yeah, as opposed to why are you showing me a snark silhouette? Because I don't want to seem like that guy, but they all look the same to me. Wow. Wow. I know. Yeah, I know. I'm going to, that'll, that'll be, Uh, that'll be the thing that will get etched on my tombstone where they say, uh, he's, he's that guy. But no, here's the thing. It's just like, it's a, it's a comic book version of a snark. It's like, (laughs) we know, we know three snarks. We know three snarks. We know Mm -hmm. Jackal, Maraud, and Bacha. Yeah. That's it. And then all snarks. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically it. They all look pretty similar, and especially in this, there's no distinguishing features on him. Let me tell you my problem thing. with Sobek. Though. Let me tell you okay. my problem with him, because uh, you said that you know you like him. I've got no problem I, with him. I, I need to ask you this though. Give me one characteristic about him besides what he does and who he's friends with. He is honorable. He actually wants peace. He. Uh, he, uh, he he's you, a realist do you, do you at see, war because he knows. But do you have a characterization? You know, we know Jack is grumpy. Mm-hmm. We know Alex has like he wants to be a leader, but he's bad at it. He tries, but he fails. We know Katie is spunky. We know Julie is bright and intelligent, and she's friendly with everybody. Okay, they haven't characterized Sobek very well. No. Other, other than <laughs> what they've said is like it's an honorable snark that tells the truth. There, that's we about find it. out more about Murad in the first issue of the main series just yeah. by looking at her. Yeah, you can you can create a character and you can sell a character in a panel. We have had three issues, and I can still tell you not much about this character. He has doubts about Power Pack because all they do is bicker. It, to be uh, fair, I've got doubts about Power Pack. Uh, but, yeah, you know, we all do. <laughs> I'm saying that he is a fine character. I just wish that he was better. They haven't done much with anybody is the problem. Right. They especially haven't done much with new characters. Yeah. Other than kind of like, oh, they've introduced a couple of new queen mothers. What do you know about them? Mm. Uh, One, her high snark son has been killed and she's spying on uh, Maraud and son. Okay. And then there's Ankar and hey, what happened to her high snark son? Where's he at? Oh, he's out doing a thing. And this is him. You know, it's Sovak. There's not a lot of new characterization going on. What you know about, you know, even like with Maraud and Jackal, here's what you know about them is like they argue and fight and they want to make snarks great again. Okay. Let's move on then. Yeah. Another thing that we have happened again is Byral shows up to say, yep. hi, peace. He, he, he drops in, says exposition, and gives a reason for the adventurers to go and adventure. Yeah. Uh, and also and also he needed to show up because yeah. we have to have Byral here. I mean, yeah, we've he got has, everybody else. Yeah. Well, uh, he's under contract. 
Yeah. Well, you can have me for a half hour on the 18th. And they said, we'll make it work. He gave us a Marlon Brando, and mm-hmm. we spent a lot of money on him. So yep. that that was the thing, too. That's why in the comic, when he, he's talking, he's mid-speech, and then his watch goes beep, 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 beep. And he's like, well, I'm out. And he leaves. <laughs> Not a lie. Not a lie. <laughs> Not entirely a truth, but it kind of seems that way. But we also have Friday back. Friday's got a new ship. Yeah, it's fine. It it's looks fine. nothing like what smart ships look like. No, but that's it's, fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's something new. Yep. I'll take it. Yes, except for the aspect of it's Friday getting a new body again. Sure. Friday's getting a new body again. Yeah. Everything to Barry and and the creators of this because they're like, hey, we want Friday back. Why did the new warriors yeah. blow him up? Oh, because the new warriors sucked. <laughs> so we we we've got Friday back, so that's okay. We, yeah, we've that, got her I'm, back. I'm, I'm, I'm glad with that. that. Yeah. And, and I'm glad we, about that. She's got a nice new ship. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing it does things because it's just like, hey, I got a new ship, and I'm a new thing again. Let's you know, jump on in. We're gonna mm-hmm. go. We're gonna go low riding. Yeah. And they go, and then yep. they show up on a planet. It's bigger than the smart ships were from before because they yeah. showed data next to it. Half again, twice again the size. So I mean, this is good. This is actually stuff. good because, you know, the, the Powers house has been burned to the ground. So they've got a bigger ship that they can stay in. Now, yeah, they, nice. need, they need a couch to crash on. So yeah. it'll be good to, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> they, need, they need their own space. Mm-hmm. What do you do with aliens if you have a no-kill policy? Wrap them up in a blanket and dump them in a freighter in the Arctic. You better believe it. This mm-hmm. is something that, once again, Power Pack has dealt with before. Where are we going to dump these aliens? We're going to thing them, mm-hmm. put them in a ship, and hope nobody discovers them while they're in Antarctica. Yeah, somewhere. Oh, dear God. Yeah, that's not good. So, it is funny that we have a- an alien race... The Snarks, who we've already said that they are a dime a dozen. They are all mm-hmm. red shirts. Mm-hmm. And Power Pack has a very high morality clause. It's, it's the thing about being a superhero. You don't kill your enemy. Unless your name is Wolverine or... Or Frank Castle. Or well, probably some other people. That's probably that's a big part of the problem with the Punisher. Is that, you know, he uses guns and there's... You can only wound so many people before it's like, Hey, what are we doing here? Yeah. So, you've got kids that are doing these fights. And they're fighting these scary creatures but they can't kill them mm-hmm. so they have to find places to put them dump their b- bodies yeah i love the crystallization ray because it's like well you crystallized them yes yes but they never touch on the aspect of are they alive can they come back do they unthaw <laughs> they never touch that they're just like oh wow you crystallized them mm-hmm. yeah which is entirely different than disintegrating so obviously it must be okay because there's still a body don't worry, we have we have a dem- demolition man type facility that yeah. we, we'll, we'll we'll reprogram them, we'll deep freeze them. It's all okay, you know. We'll, we'll get a little bit of Taco Bell in, and they'll thaw right they'll out. They'll thaw right out. It's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Here's something I like about this book. It does pose that interesting question. I don't think they do enough with it, mm-hmm. but they do pose the question of morality in comic books. Of hey, your superheroes, hey, your superhero kids, you've got this high level morality. We don't kill our villains. But we beat them up so much that they run away. Yeah. Or we go around with people who have tech or less morals than we do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if, if we're in town, we just wrapped them up in a, in a, a lamppost and the police come and like, hey, get out the blowtorch. That happened yep. again. Yep. Citizens arrest. Well, go on your way, sir. There are questions to be asked about this. And I think it's a good questions to ask. I know way back when I used to run a Palladium Heroes Unlimited game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I made it part of the game that I was running that if you kill a bad guy, there's consequences because you are a superhero in a civilized city. This is not high level adventure where you can go in the forest and kill whenever you run across. Mm -hmm. Murder hobos. Yeah, it's you, you know, you kill somebody here, there's consequences. You are a hero. How do you decap, how do you, not (laughs) decapitate, how do you take care of these criminals to such an extent that they, you stop them, but you do not kill them? How do you pull your punch? And you know, I, I had some pushback on that, but I'm like, my game. <laughs> and you got to figure it out. You are mm-hmm. heroes. That mm-hmm. is part of being a hero. You can't all be Frank Castle. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else interesting? I mean, we have a long space flight. Marg! Yeah. Uh, yeah. The story beats in the book are the same where we keep jumping from storyline to storyline and we keep doing the thing of the dialogue box from one storyline is dragging over into the next storyline yep. box and it's it, it, it's very uncomfortable. It's very odd. The ending was weird that 
Well, it ended on type of a splash page, but there was nothing interesting. It's just the snark and... <laughs> it was them going, we got here in time. No, we didn't. Oh, my goodness. Look at that amazing thing over there. If only we had the budget to show it. Yeah, they don't even do the shadow, right? It's like... No. You can tell there's a shadow on the ground, but you there's it's undefined. Really? It's not that... Uh, there's a shadow on the ground, but it's really undefined. It's and just... It, it's shading, man. Yeah, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's not... Nothing. But that's what I'm saying is they couldn't even do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The artist got tired. <laughs> I, I think so. It's just like, uh, look, I got us to the end, okay? Yeah, but what about the big cool spaceship reveal? Uh, I'll make it a splash page for the next one, I guess. Just leave me alone. I don't want to. <sighs> well, well, we've got power thoughts. Yes. We, as you can tell, we've got many thoughts. And we're mm-hmm. going to get letters saying you guys are so negative, negative, negative. Well, I got good news for you folks, because we have a refrigerator gallery. The refrigerator is hot. It's very hot. It may not be keeping things that cool inside because the house is on fire. But we're going to go ahead and see what happens when we put up some art on there. It's probably just going to burst into flames, but we're going to put it on there nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So what piece of art needs to burst into flames when we put it on the family refrigerator? Starting with our backup funny one. Jeff, did you find something funny in here? Oh, well, yes, I did. But also, I'm I'm just going to give you my best art right now, which is a joke, because it's a there's an ad for Godzilla 2000 movie, and that looks pretty cool. That is a good looking (laughs) piece of art. I like that the best art out of all of them. My joke backup one is on page 22, Mm -hmm. and I call it, Where's Mr. Tumnus? (laughs) I see where you're going here. I see where you're going here. Because this is uh, near the end, and the kids are getting transported off their ship through elsewhere for some reason to get to the Snark World planet. And while they're in there, they see a bunch of doors, and there's just this one off panel off to the side of a lamppost. Katie's even like, oh, that lamppost. Hey, I wonder. Julie's like, we don't have time for that. And it's like, I think they're trying to do the John's Elsewhere comic where it's just like all the literary things kind of deal. And so they're trying to allude to another great kind of thing from past Power Pack comics of Elsewhere, but kind of done it poorly because I had to think about it for a while because I'm like, you're just showing me a street lamp. I thought of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe too because mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, look, a lamppost. Yeah, that's where I went. But at the same time, I'm like, why? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Rehash, recycle old, better things. Yeah. yeah. I think. I, I, I would like you to turn to page seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. But I had to use this one. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mark. Mark. Oh, God, Mark. And this is actually... <laughs> yeah, where one of those carryover lines went, which was like, what on earth is going on? And I didn't, it was just me today realizing that, last night, realizing that those th- two things tied together. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sad, so this, so this sad is, Jim Power. This is a close-up of, of Jim Power's face, and he is crying, and he looks really sad, pitiful. He says, oh, God, Marg. And I, I every mm. time I looked at it, I didn't feel sad for him. I started <laughs> laughing. I... <laughs> I'm a bad man. I'm a bad, bad man. No, but, I, I get it. Whew, it's, I understand why you picked it. It's a thing, my friend. It's a thing. It's a it thing. It is definitely a thing. This is after Jim has dropped <clears throat> comatose Maggie off to the hospital, and they're like, all right, we'll check her out. We'll check her out. This is going to be bad. And he is sad. His, his yeah. poor wife is in the hospital, and I'm yeah. calling it a funny, funny. Yeah, he's sad, Anyways, for, he's I, sad for old Marg. Yeah, Marg. Marg. Okay, <laughs> Jeff, what is your, what's your top funny one? Go to your very first page which on Marvel Unlimited is is page two. (laughs) And I call it, We Are the Squat Squad. (laughs) Because it is, it is just, it's a ridiculous splash page where you can tell that they had to like make up for the compression of the page because it's not a full, it's like a two thirds instead of a full page. And just everybody's just got this super ridiculous deep leg stance and like pointing to the sky. It's not... A deep, deep leg. It is nothing that you would be doing where, like, if you saw something cool in the sky, you wouldn't take the me splits and point to the sky and be like, look up there. It's like a Bee Gees cover. It's ridiculous. And you got the it's, sunshine right back there, right yeah. dead center, and, and, yep. and Alex is and out pointing his finger and... and yeah. Yeah, everybody's it's... just flailing around mm. with the deep, deep leg stance. It, it's ridiculous to me because it's so stupid and there's no point to it. Go forward two pages and because mm-hmm. this is something we brought up and I, I, it's on page three and it's the bottom right corner <laughs> and I call this one, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> because this is where Alex has decided to go off on Sobek and he's like, you can't kill people and he's yelling up in his face and the 
Sobak is looking down and I'm going, I can bite your head off. He's giving him a look like, I, I'm going to kill you. And in the background, we got Kofi, who's, Kofi's drawn always at a weird angle in here. Yeah. You just see profile. But it looks like he is rolling his eye mm-hmm. at the at, at this. And and so you got two alien p- creatures are like, you're, you're kidding me, right? Right? You're kidding me. That was mine. Yeah, it's a funny one. What is your backup favorite art? I'm going to be honest. I don't like most of the art in this book. Sure. Which which is kind of sad to me, which is why I jokingly said 2001 was really good. But my backup good art is on page 18 on Marvel Unlimited. And I call it do a barrel roll. (laughs) And this is the two thirds splash page of Friday inhabiting her new spaceship body. It is in fact doing a barrel roll up barrel rolling flippy flippy. And it's the glory shot of Friday's new body. It's the new smart ship. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's all right. No, I agree with you. I did like that. I do like the design of the ship. That is a very respectable shot. Mm -hmm. My backup one is about four pages forward on that. And it's on what I call page 14. And I call this one Crystal Pony. <laughs> and this is as Byroll is teleporting into the situation of Jack and Julia almost coming to blows. Yep. And the way that they got Byroll teleporting in, it's pretty cool. It, it's kind of a white shimmering. There's some stars going there. And it looks like this Crystal Pony is forming in there. Yeah. I like the transition. I like that artwork style of teleporting. I think it's done well. I agree. I like it. That's a good one. What is your top favorite one? Go all the way back to the front to page three. And Mm -hmm. if I thought it was ridiculous at the front page, then it's going to be even better when it's a splash page. (laughs) And I call it, I said, we are the Squat Squad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and this is when Power Pack, still in their deep squat stances, are doing their costume on. And everybody, it, it's just cooler looking because everybody's you know, getting into their costumes and flying. And Kofi apparently has energy blast attack powers now. And I really like the fact that Sobek has Bracer on his left arm. It's very Predator-like mm-hmm. that he's tapping buttons and just like weapons or whatever he needs is forming out of that. Liquid metal is forming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. tippy tippy tappy. I want this thing, and it goes. You betcha. And it's a disintegrator blaster, and he got a disintegrator blaster. All of them except for Kofi are just ah, ah, yeah. Ah. They, they, yeah all got Kofi, their, they all got their war faces on. They they changed what the Chimelians kind of look like and made their boots really huge too. And they're all yeah. they're all very violently pink lavender with dead shark eyes now. So. <laughs> My favorite one is on page 10, and I actually appreciated this one. I went back to this one a few times, and I call this Maraud in purple panels. And this is the entire page because of how it's set up, but kind of starts off at the top where Maraud is starting her rant, and she's up in the corner, top left corner, and then there's four panels that go down, and the panels kind of start small and get a little bigger. But you have this kind of purple of her cape, that is forming the left-hand side of the panels, and it's dripping down. And then at the bottom, you've got a big claw. This is the part of Colleen Doran's art that I really like. This is what I have seen her do with No Glass Apple. She does this kind of really fantasy, surreal art, and I think that's a much better use of her art style. Mm Mm-hmm. I like this. It fits better with that kind of style. Yeah. yeah. She can really elongate the, the creatures. She can really put in some detail in there. And it just, it, it flows together and it's not awkward. I like this. And unfortunately, this is the only part in this book that this occurs. <laughs> but I really like that. All right. So... Now that we got that done, let's go ahead and talk about some words that hurt us. We want to talk about childish insults. We want to talk about rubber and glue moments. What are the things that we like to say to each other that make us cry? And I would like to tell you, Jeff, that Mm -hmm. you, according to what is said on page six, you are nothing but a foolish hatchling. Oh, foolish hatchling. Ouch. That got me right in my eggs. Yep, yep. That 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 tends to that tends to leave a mark and sting. Mm-hmm. And this is actually the intangible snark that's telling this to Julie <laughs> as Julie flies through her or yep. through flew him. And I'm intangible, foolish hatchling. I, a foolish hatchling is good. It's a classic. It's one we've, it is. we've heard it's a lot. It's one that so. they've used often. Yeah. And so bringing back something good from the past. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. What do you got? On page 12, it's when Sobak is getting ready to muzzle the, the traitors who had been, uh-huh. you know, had yep, wrapped yep, up yep. and everything. The one snark that had attacked him was like, what, Sobak, what are you doing? Sobak is like, it seems obvious, belly crawler. 
He's muzzling him. And I like belly crawler. I think that's a great name for saying that this snark was cowardly and, yeah. you know, and, 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 and it, you know, it was coward. It was a yellow, it's not a yellow belly. It's a it's belly a crawler. Belly I, like like, it. I like it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. cool. That's good. Yeah. That's good. On the same page, and I'll be surprised if you don't have this one. On the same page. Uh, no, bottom. Bottom. I know. I'm just saying it's my top. It's my top, too. <laughs> it's Jack. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. It's Jack. Yes, my apologies, Jack. You may call me Soback. Whatever. A snark is a snark. Is it me or does anybody else think it's totally stupid to be helping a loser snark? Loser, loser snark. snark. Just, all yep. of, just yep. everything of Jack's is just... Stupid. It's like, oh. Stupid to be helping a loser snark. Yeah. Sn- <laughs> whatever. A snark is a snark. Yeah. And yeah it's just <laughs> totally stupid. Loser snark. So many great words in there. Yep. Yep. Yep, top, yep, totally top, 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 top. top. Uh, <laughs> speaking of top, speaking mm-hmm. of top, stars in detention, oh, stars yeah. in detention, identifying the child who was the best and the child who was the worst in the issue. Mm-hmm. So we'd like to start off with the worst, and I'm going to go ahead and say, Alex, and this is all I'm going to say is, dude, lead, <laughs> lead, be a leader. Yes, it's it's Alex. I thought about Jack for a little bit, but no, it's it's Alex. It's 100% Alex. It's, yeah. Kofi's like, get on board the SS, go to spaceship. Uh, we got to go. And Alex, is like, they're all like, yeah, okay, cool. There's nothing we could do for mom anyway. Yeah, we've never seen them use their joint healing powers to heal their mom before. So, and let me let me just take that because that was Alex, and that was all of them too. And and Katie had her own problems there. But because of that, and because of his introspective, and because Jack seemed to be the only person, Jack's whining a lot, yeah. but at the same time, Jack seems to be the only person who says, hey, what about mom? Yeah. What about the other things mm-hmm. we need to do? Why are we helping the snarks? Why are we helping the chameleons again? Why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. I had to say Jack was the best. And it was a lot of the same things. A lot of things that Alex was doing, it's like, Alex was reacting back to Jack, and Jack's like, no... We need to be here. Mm-hmm. And if they were there, they could have stopped the fire. Yeah. <laughs> they, they could have done lots of different they things. They could have done lots of things. I can totally see why you picked Jack as the best. And, and, and also, he, I just want to point out, too, his mm-hmm. moment with Julie. He yes. went up. He saw that his sister was in pain. He went up, kindly asking if he could help, and nope. Yeah, she bit yeah. him off. Yeah, because he was even like, I know the this, this stuff with mom isn't bugging you. I know the stupid snark stuff isn't bugging you. Mm-hmm. It's that jerk at school. What do yeah. you do? And she's like, nothing. Just, yeah. ah. you know, so it's like, okay. Jack went back and forth. Jack had some good moments. Jack had some bad moments. Yeah. Alex basically just had bad moments. My best kid is Katie. Okay. She was happy throughout. She got a new body f- for Friday. She was happy about to see Lord Byrell. It was There was a lot of things. She was just joy. She was never dour, dour, dour. She was not paying attention to the fact that really of anything in the family, she was just like, oh, cool, space adventure, and Friday would love to go into space again. Let's get Friday into space. My, my only problem was is that was all Katie thought of. That mm-hmm. was it. Katie's like, we get to take Friday into space. It would be nothing about her mom. No. no. Nothing about anything else. She was very much that one trick pony. Mm-hmm. I see that. I still okay. like. I still thought that Katie was the best kid. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and grade this book, mm-hmm. and we evaluate this book against the rest of the series. And we're going to start at the top, and we're going to go down, and we're probably going to stay down. Mm-hmm. But we're going to say number one, still forever in our hearts, number one, Power Pack Forty Two, Revenge of the Boogeyman. So good, so good. In spot number twelve, we have Power Pack number twelve, and that is underground. That's where the kids get lost while trying to save a cat. Ah, oh, that was a good issue. I like that one. I still remember that one. <laughs> we'll go ahead and move on down to spot number twenty-four, and this is Power Pack number twenty-four. Huh? That's interesting that we've got a couple yeah, like huh, that. That's funny. Uh, and this is when you wish upon a star, and this is Katie is found by the cave dwellers, and Yurik helps to save her. This is back when they're on Snark World for the first time, and now down on spot. 35. Power pack number 44. What price victory? Family is broken. The new mutants help trick the parents into thinking that the kids don't have their powers. Ah, Gossamer, how we don't miss you. (laughs) All right, let's go ahead and move on down to spot number 46. We have power pack number 33, and this is Jeff's favorite issue. I swear I didn't pick this on purpose, but this is special effects. Power pack, lie to Sunspot and Warlock to soothe Sunspots and Jeff's bruised ego. (laughs) Now on to spot number 
57. And this is Power Pack number 46, The Great Gugam Ripoff. More Three Stooges hijinks with Dakota North and, we mentioned him already, The Punisher. On to spot number 68. This is Marvel Fanfare Volume 1, number 55, also drawn by Colleen Doran. And this is where... Magic and Warlock help to pack to fight a demon while Jack gets bullied. And at the bottom of our list, we still have power pack number 56, Acts of Vengeance, Typhoid Mary, Seducing Alex, and yeah, it's not going to be that bad. No. But it ain't, it ain't super high. Let's just start with the highs of the volume twos, which is number yeah. 67, issue number one. Do we like this better or worse than volume two, issue number one? That's hard, because... In issue number one, there was more promise. Okay. Uh, now that we're this deep in the series, we keep looking for the things that are mm-hmm. that are really good. Yeah. But we aren't going to drop it too much farther down because I know we have whatever I mentioned, the Marvel fanfare number fifty five, the Battle of PS eighty <laughs> seven. Mm, I I think I might like that one better actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You like the fanfare, huh? Ooh. And below that, we have Child's Play with Madcap. That's got problems, but <laughs> I like Madcap. Wow. All right. I'm, I think that this is still better than Starstruck. Uh, no, spot number 70, <laughs> we have Power Pack number 58. Franklin steals from Galactus and the pack fights evil Nova. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, better. This is better than that one. This, this is better. This than has one. got some stuff going on in it. It's ridiculous, but not in the same way. Yeah, it, this is the right spot. I, I think that, yeah, I think I think I could read this one again before that Starstruck. So mm-hmm. we'll make this the new number 70. Okay. I won't fight you on that. Uh, I kind of feel like it could go up a little bit higher, but I'm okay with it being at 70. Do you really think it's better than Madcap? I'm not a fan of the Madcap one, but uh, I, I, like I said, I'm not going to argue it. I think it can be dropped at 70 being fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely in the neighborhood. Yeah. It may not be the exact ad- address that I give it, but it's definitely in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, let's, let's go ahead and talk about the beer because that <laughs> is actually bringing some joy, at least in my life. I'm still enjoying this. Yeah, it's pleasant. It's got a little bit of sharpness, but that's just because the beer's warming up. But it's not bad. I'm still getting I'm still getting the vanilla hits. I'm mm-hmm. still getting the coconut hits. A little more of the hops are sneaking through. I'm getting through. more hops. The hops are... It uh, starts off as kind of a beer that turns into hops that then turns into vanilla coconut. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Not bad at all. I am, yeah. I'm enjoying it. I'm thinking this is good. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking this is something that you can take up to space with you and be happy. Because in space, nobody can hear you belch. Yeah, it's true, is it? I Tell me know. I'm wrong. I don't, no, I don't want to. Okay. Then, if, if, if you're wrong, I don't want to be right, Rick. Okay, I yeah. like that. I'm enjoying it. It would, it would It's one that I would drink again. Cosmos by Ecliptic Brewing. How many Powerballs would you blast off into Cosmos? So I'm thinking I like it, but I definitely don't love it. Mm-hmm. Not a four, maybe a three... Maybe a, uh, we'll go three five. It's it's decent. I would drink it again. It's livable. Yeah, I think I'm going there too. I think I like the three point five as well. I, I'm 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 okay with that. I am okay with the three point five as well. I think that would bring us to uh, kids' perspective. Yeah, and that's where Rick talks to his ten year old daughter Carrie about the book that we just covered. So Rick and Carrie take it away. Hello, Carrie. Hello, Daddy. So, we are here to talk about the Power Pack Volume 2, issue number 3. What's going on in this issue? A lot of things. Okay, what's the main thing that's going on? Where are the kids at? In space! In space. (laughs) So, they took off to space, and where's their mom at? The hospital. Okay, so they're in space, and why are they going in space? What are they gonna? What are they supposed to do? Stuff with snarks. Anything in particular? There's this whole emperor, empress. Well, there's this whole royal thing. Yeah, it used to be Emperor Bacha, but now it's Jackal, and he's trying to kill all of his enemies with his mom, Maraud. Right. And they want to try to stop him, right? Yeah. Okay. Were you following all that pretty well? It doesn't sound like you were really following it too well. Uh, no. I mean, I've been trying to catch all of it, but... Is it too confusing for you? Well, they're kind of just showing everything in there. Uh Uh-huh. Sometimes, to me, it seems all at once. Okay. Is there anything really exciting that happened that you liked in this book? There's Somebody else came back, right? 
Kofi? Well, yeah, Kofi's back, but then they go into space and they're able... Oh, right, right, Friday. Friday's back, right? Yeah. Wait, hold on. I'm actually kind of confused because I believe in this issue, if I'm not getting confused with the other issue, they called Friday a she in this issue? I think so. And then in the first issue, they called it a he... I'm confused now. (laughs) I always call Friday a she. And I think you're right. I think that the writer might have gotten a little confused in this series. Okay. To me, I think Friday deserves to be in a... It's not really much of a he or she kind of thing. It's more of a robot. And robots don't really have that much of a gender. So, it's... But it is a sentient being and they can choose their own gender, correct? Right. That just makes it more confusing, though. We'll just refer to Friday as a she. But in this issue, it's just switching and it's mind-blowing. <laughs> They go up to space, and they get talked into going and finishing this mess that's going on. Jack's not all that thrilled about it. No, he's not. No, he's not. The other kids are just kind of going along with it, right? Yeah. Are you enjoying this series? Yeah, it's a different kind of art. Do you still like the art? Yeah. Okay. It's still kind of keeping some of the things from before. Mm Mm-hmm. Not sure if the masks really did it for me, but... You don't really like the masks? Well, I mean, they're there. I don't... (laughs) Well, to be honest, they really don't need the costumes in the first place, but they really want that disguise thing. The masks aren't... It's not all that disguising. Well, and it really doesn't matter if they're in space, right? No, it doesn't, which they are most time. Yeah, it's like they got the masks, but they're not doing anything on Earth. Speaking of the artwork, what do you think of the cover of the book? It definitely shows stuff happening. (laughs) Do you like it or not? Uh, It kind of shows what's happening in the book, so I think I like it. It shows the reflection, which is really hard to do, in my opinion. Yeah. And it also shows the kids. But when I saw it at first, I think maybe the ships could have been slightly lighter or something. Because otherwise, it looks like they're shooting right through Alex and then Jack. (laughs) And then apparently they have cracks. They, They were trying to be very clever with it, but I don't think it came out that well. Jeff and I had some problems with that cover. Yeah, I mean, maybe a little bit here and a little bit there, and it may have turned out a bit better, but... <laughs> what else? Is there anything else in this book that you were you liked or didn't like or you had a problem with? I am going to share something that I thought about how Jack was reacting. Okay. Well, he's being pretty upset about all of this, staying away from Mom when she's at the hospital. Mm-hmm. But... At one point, though, he asked if Julie was okay, mm-hmm. and that's when she turned out to be all angry at him, even though even though it's not his business, it helps to actually have somebody to talk to about that. Yeah. While Jack may not understand, it's better to get it off your breast and stuff. Get it off your chest. Whatever, sorry. I've heard too many stuff from uh, another <laughs> comic book. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you wanted to say then? Sorry. That's okay. No, not really. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome. I love you. Love you too. Ah, there you go, Carrie. Always insightful as always. We really do appreciate you helping us out here and telling us your views on things. And now we want to shout out to recognize those listeners that take the time to write in and leave us a review. This is for episode 93, our fourth episode overview of new warriors with our special guest star david gallagher aj certified mass mister and he says the mini from the year 2000 and julie's flop era up next al sedano in his podcast resurrections and adam warlock and thanos podcast david gallagher our amazing and awesome guest star dear watchers a what if plus multiversal podcast keith baker charles gears chris light Hoover Jeremiah and his podcast, Four Million Years Later. Jeremy Daw. Justin Steiner. Malcontent. Max Travers. Siskoid. Tim Price and his podcast, The Outcasters. Waffles and his podcast, Waffles and Mario Talk About Things. 
And he says, it's so surreal hearing someone outside of Aotearoa, New Zealand, talk about once we're warriors. Great episode. Be sure to check out our other shows that we are on. Our junior agent submissions on the MI6 Rogue Agent episodes of On Her Majesty's Secret Podcast. And monthly Monday movie muckabout on the Longbox Crusade Podcast. And we have some merchandise available on Redbubble. Go to redbubble.com and search for Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Jeff and Mark present is a bi-weekly self-produced podcast recorded in front of a live studio audience of one working eyeball in Portland, Oregon. If you would like to interact with us through the magic of the internet, you can do so through Twitter at Jeff and Mark present, our Facebook page, Jeff and Mark present, our email address, Jeff and Mark present, all one word at gmail.com, and our website, Jeff and Mark present dot wordpress dot com. Also, our YouTube channel is at Jeff and Rick present. And if you would like to help support our show, we are on Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com, Jeff and Rick present, all one word. We are all also a proud supporter of the Hero Initiative, and we will be donating 10% of our Patreon donations to this great cause. We encourage everyone to give what they can to this worthwhile organization that helps the creators who provide us with such great content. Go to HeroInitiative.org to find out more. Please rate and review us wherever you can, tell your friends about us, and share your love for us on social media. And as always, we want to thank the powerful people in our packs. My wife Cindy and our daughter Carrie. My fiance Hillary and our daughter Aurora. We, we love, love you. you. Until next time. Costumes, Costumes off. Our theme music is 80s action. Also featured in this episode is Corky Dog. All music is by Kevin McLeod at Ecoptech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0 license. And that's an ad. That's a cold open. I'm sure that cartoon was just as good as this comic series of Power Pack. Zrap. Because I know how to pour a beer correctly. Yeah, well, your mother sews socks that smell. Touche. Zrap. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that makes sense. And it allows you to do a sloppy pour and not feel bad about it. I just edited all that out in my head. <laughs> and that's one to grow on. Zrap. Half of who have changed the colors of their shirts since last episode. Zrap. Lest you fall into the pits of ambiguity. Ambiguity. Zrap. Changed out a mobilization blaster rifle. Rifle. <laughs> Gee, why are you changing it? That's right. I'm a jerk. Killing me. But that order of staff. <laughs> I just see your cursor hovering over it. Just desperate to mess with me. I, I'll get you. I'll, I'll get you. Zrap. Morg. 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 <laughs> and Jim Power cries to the heavens. Morg. <laughs> What does it mean? Um, Morg! 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 Zrap! He bought flannel and everything! <laughs> <laughs> now you can do it. He has the voice of reason. <laughs> Sorry, it just occurred That's to okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have fun where we can have it. Jack is not happy with this. He bought flannel and everything! Well, we gotta have fun where we find it, baby. Zrap! Yeah, the, uh, she, she said, she shed, wow, that's hard.